Okay, so now we're looking at the unit here. Uh, we're gonna look at the controls first. So here you can see the air pressure gauge. There's a set screw to set the PSI maximum before shutting off automatically. And there's a needle here showing you the current compressed air uh, volume. Next is the thermometer in Celsius, so you can watch the temperature of the motor and make sure it's not overheating. There's a water pump on and off switch so that you can turn the water pump on. And then the compressor switch right here, you can turn the compressor switch on. So when you go to power it on, you're going to turn on the water pump and then uh, give it a moment or two to circulate the water and then you start the compressor. Once you start the compressor, then you get to your compressed volume. It should basically auto shut off or you can go ahead and turn it off. You want to leave the water pump running for some time to help it cool down the motor. Once that's done, you can press the power off on the water pump and you're in good shape. Okay, there's also the water fill cap right here to fill the water reservoir that's built into it. And the one thing I would share with you is, is that when you first provide water into the unit, you want to fill it um, very, very high. I know there's a, um, I'll show you over here, there's actually um, where it shows you the volume of water in the reservoir, but the water pump inlet is about here. So you might want to keep your water a bit high. And then once you turn it on, it's going to circulate water, of course, and it has to fill up the radiator which you see down below here. So this radiator is uh, built into the unit. It looks just like to me what I see on like high-end computers that do water cooling. And I will go around here so that you can see these are the fans uh, here on the radiator. There's an inlet and an outlet on the radiator. So um, the one thing I noticed is, is that these hoses that are here, they are rubbing up against the, the motor in some locations. Um, and then where you go to drain um, right here and you, you notice that there's a drain re uh, right here. So you can basically drain the entire reservoir and refill it back up. But I noticed that the hose basically, you know, is touching all up underneath the bottom of the motor. So I might get some sort of uh, heat tape that wraps around that portion of the hose and this portion where it rubs. But I'm going to first um, identify how hot this really gets to, and then kind of make that determination. Then this is the fill cap slash breather cap for the oil that we put in. So again, we talked about the air compressor oil. You want to make sure that when you fill it up that the line of the oil is near that the bottom part of it is near where the red dot is. So there's a uh, max fill line right there that you can watch. And then this I, looks like to me is a 10 millimeter so you can drain it. So um, just watch the watch the oil level after you power it on and run that for a few minutes keep an eye on that it shouldn't really change after you've used it for some time but just keep an eye on it and then you see here you have two cylinders you have this cylinder on the left which is more of a high volume um, to to get up to a certain psi before the high psi cylinder kicks in and um, supplies the higher compression rate for the air okay and then we're going to circle around here where you can look at the different filtration that it goes through. So it already goes through um, filtration here and it came with two packets. Um, I'll see if I can bring those over for you. It came with these, these packets. Of, this looks like carbon to me. Um, and then this here, these little balls um, just basically look like they absorb. So you have where it purifies and then at the same time you have uh, where it absorbs. So uh, typical air compressor filters. Um, and then over here you have a relief valve. And so what you do is if you're filling up, say, a gun where you fill it up and then turn the compressor off, you don't want to just disconnect the hose. You want to be able to go ahead and um, release uh, the air out of the hose prior before disconnecting it. Um, so pay real close attention to that. 
If you have a tank that you're filling up, like this Air Venturi tank I plan on, um, this has a bleeder on the tank itself as well as um, the air hand handle um, for turning it on and off. So um, one thing I wanted to share with you was that this air reservoir, I, I took both the shrouds off and I'll show a picture here during the video of what the shroud looks like when it's um, with the side panel turned uh, off. But this, um, there's actually a zip tie right here that goes around. And when you take this off, I noticed that the way that they built it, you know how the zip tie loops back into one another and then it's tightened? That piece was actually going into the reservoir. And I think after vibration of time, it, it basically would have poked a hole through that uh, reservoir. So I snapped that off and took that off. Uh, we'll see if this provides vibration um, when I go to turn it on. But just uh, be advised, I happen to notice that. You might check yours too. The other thing I noticed on the reservoir, the reservoir has screws that kind of mount to a plate to keep the reservoir stable. There's a screw missing on that far bottom left. I don't know if that was intentional or they just left. So you can see that screw that I'm pointing at right there that's way in the back. That screw is um, on the other side was missing. So... Um, Am I going to replace it? Well, well, we'll find out the vibration and how much um, problem that's going to cause. So, um, okay, that's enough here. I'm going to go ahead and pause this and switch to the other side. Okay, so to this side over here, you can just see the back side of the motor. And you can look in there and you can see the fan on the motor. The motor is pretty massive. Um, and I'm pretty sure this is just a, an exact duplicate of somebody else's that manufactures these because uh, this motor looks identical to the ones I've seen on some of the other brands. And then, of course, you plug your power cord into here. Um, coming out of the unit, they already have this line uh, air pressure hose, and um, it's a female connection, so if you are plugging directly into, say, a PCP gun, um, that's great, then that's super easy. But if you're plugging it into an Air Venturi, um, then you'll notice that you're going to need an adapter. So I actually bought an adapter, an Air Venturi adapter, um, two, two male coupler, basically, and that way I can connect it. While I was doing that, I decided to go overkill on this and put in an additional inline filter. I bought this and it may look like, okay, I'm doing that to fill up the tank after it's been running. But why I really bought that was the air that's inside the tank, even though it's basically been pre-filtered, um, air can condensate in that inside the tank and so forth. So when I go to fill up my gun, I wanted to have a way to be able to go just to the opposite of this, like have this on my air tank and filter it one more time before I put it in the my device. So um, the only other side we didn't really get a full look at was here. And so now you see the water fill line, you see the bottom of the reservoir, you see again the radiator that's there. And the other Vivor unit that you can buy that's less expensive basically has these hoses with an external pump that you would say sit here and put it into a bucket and fill it full of water and you would run the water pump on and I've seen someone else YouTube put ice in the bucket and so forth to like really have cool cool water but their motor temperature didn't really change much it was already pretty low in Celsius so I wasn't I don't I don't think I need to do that this one has a radiator on it too to, to help um, cool the water down. So uh, stay tuned for part two. Part two of this will have um, the video that's related to it operating and, and turning on. That I was a little less concerned about sharing because I think that, you know, you know, you could turn this on, watch the pressure go up and put it in your tank and the times and so forth. I think you can fill a gun up in just at three minutes, depending on the size of the PCP gun you have. If it's a um, it's a very large tank, I think it's around three minutes. Um, as far as 
uh, scuba tank, I hear that's quite a while. So I hope to get some numbers and um, maybe show another clip on that, either a part two video or um, so just um, take note of that. I, I said I was going to kind of make fun of this manual just a little bit. And there are, you know, what's interesting is this was made by Vivor. But when you come down and you're reading the manual, it's made by this. I won't even try to explain what that is. But so obviously Vivor must have that outsourced. You know, it says imported the U.S. from this technology company. And so... Um, you know, obviously this comes from China. So, um, there you go. Uh, the, the manual on it, I just, you know, uh, I, I just, there's like more spelling errors and grammatical errors on nearly every single page. And so, um, just, uh, I think that from this video, you pretty much have everything that you need. And so, okay. All right. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. I want to thank you guys for uh, watching. And and uh, so if you have any questions, put your uh, questions in the comment section here. I'm not a YouTuber where I want you to have to subscribe and all that, but you're welcome to. It was just uh, to show you what this um, device looks like, talk a little bit about it and help give you some information. All right. Thanks, guys.